Welcome to Break for Art. My name is Jesse Carrillo, Manager of Adult Programs with the Dallas Museum of Art. Today we are going to spend some time with this object, a mask with a seal or sea otter spirit made in the late 19th century by the Yupik people of Western Alaska. Take a moment to make this video full screen so you can have an immersive experience with this work of art. Maybe begin looking at the outer edges of this object and work your way toward the face at the center, giving each concentric circle a moment of focus. Or begin with the face and follow each line that radiates outward. Pause for as long as you need and then click play to see a few points of interest in the mask. As you were looking, what are some details that stood out to you? What materials did you notice? What questions came up for you? This mask is a 19th century example of an art form that still exists and comes from a group living in Western Alaska, a people who have made their home in this region for at least 10,000 years. Yupik masks take many forms. Masks like this one are used in end of the year festivals to acknowledge the animals who have given their lives over the past year to feed the community and to ask the universe for abundance in the coming year. This type of ceremony takes place in the men's lodge, which is the social and ceremonial center of the community. And these spirit masks hang from the rafters so dancers can move behind them, wearing them in a sense. Let's take a closer look. You may have noticed that there are several natural materials used in this object. It includes wood, maybe from a local tree or driftwood found near the water's edge, feathers, gut cord to attach the various components, and natural pigments like this lovely brown, white, and blue. Other examples of these types of masks even include baleen from whales that migrate to this region. Notice the care given to carving and painting this object. Each of these feathers and appendages are carefully carved, attached with cord, and then set into perfectly hollowed out areas in the main portion of the mask. Look at the way the pigment catches the carved texture of this face at center. We can really see the hand of the artist here. Although we do see some wearing of the paint and cracking of the wood, like this object has been used a lot since its creation, we also see that it has been carefully preserved for future generations. While abstracted, there are two figures in this mask. One is a brown painted beaver with a fish in its mouth. Notice its face toward the bottom of the mask and its tail at the top with four outstretched legs. Within the beaver's back is a smiling face in a beautiful shade of white, surrounded by two concentric rings and flanked by two paws extending to the sides of the face. This is the spirit or inwa of a seal or sea otter. Like the materials that this mask is made of, the animals portrayed here are found in Western Alaska. And they are animals that, in the 19th century at least, would have been hunted for food, pelts, or other resources that the community needed. As we move our focus outward from these two figures, we see six long feathers carefully arranged between the carved beaver and otter paws, creating a sort of halo around the central carving. These feathers represent stars or snowflakes. Imagine the way this mask would look hanging inside an interior space during a nighttime ceremony. The bright face and the paws of the sea otter would seem to glow, and the white feathers would catch not only the light, but every breeze dancing around like twinkling stars or snowflakes falling to the earth. And finally, we see a large hoop that encircles the beaver's body. This hoop is called an alangwat, which means cosmos or universe. 
One of the things I find most interesting about this mask is the balance of positive and negative space. We've already spent some time looking at the positive space, things like the animals and the feathers. Let's focus now on all of the open space created by the Alangwat and the holes in the sea otter spirit's paws. These voids are incredibly meaningful in the context of this object. The Yupik believe that everything has a spirit, people, animals, and things, and all participate in an endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. For the Yupik people, there's a fluidity between the spirit world and the real world, and between the world of humans and that of animals. The movement between the real and spirit worlds is visualized here by the Alangwat hoop and the two colorful rings that surround the otter spirit's face. The circular holes in the otter spirit's paws represent a passageway between the human and animal worlds, an opening through which the keeper of the game allows animals to pass from the spirit world to the world of humans to replenish the supply of game for Yupik hunters. It's a reminder that animals give themselves to human beings and they deserve respect in return. This season, you might find yourself thinking back on the last year, as so many of us do, and expressing gratitude for the gifts that you've received. I hope it inspires you to revisit and reflect on this wonderful object. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you soon at the DMA.